So um, yeah, we're, we're uh, going to uh, to first talk about why um, I, I started working on Lutris. So I started like using Linux as a full-time operating system about like uh, 2005. Uh, at the time, um, there was not a lot of options uh, to run games on, on Linux. Uh, one, one of those options was uh, play on Linux. So that was an option I've considered becoming a contributor to, uh, to play on Linux. Uh, the, architect the software architecture of uh, play on Linux didn't really fit uh, what I wanted to do. Um, I mean, it was Python, Lotus is also Python, but it was using uh, WX widgets, uh, which I wasn't really familiar with. And plus, uh, it was a mixture of Bash and Python, which I wasn't a big fan of. And the most important thing is, I didn't want Lutris to be a wine launcher. So Play on Linux was exclusively for Windows games. At that time, I mean, now things have a bit changed, but uh, at that time, I wanted really to have uh, native gaming above wine gaming. So wine gaming for, for the stuff that we couldn't have, but I wanted to have as much native as possible. Uh, that, that will change like over time, but... Um, <clears throat> So yeah, we started like uh, having video games on Linux like in around like 98, 99 with Loki. So that was like a really small studio, but they ported uh, really some big games like Quake 3, uh, Unreal Tournament. Uh, a lot of the big games like in released in 99 had Linux ports. Uh, there was also Linux game publishing that were, would release um, a few ports. And then for a few years, we didn't get anything, like basically any, uh, like nothing. Uh, during like 2000, like from the, the day like Loki stopped to around like 2010, there were like so many, so few uh, games. There were like uh, Serious Sam 2, Prey, uh, Enemy Territory, Quake Wars. I mean, those are the, the few I can think of, but other than that, it were like really, really, uh, um, few native games back then. And then Humble Bundle came and they had this Humble Indie Bundle where they said, you can have your game in your bundle, but you must have uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac versions of your game and they must be GRM free. And that changed a lot of the landscape of, the, of Linux gaming. Um, and after that, uh, there, like just a couple of years after Humble Bundle, we got Steam on Linux. So that changed even more. That's where we started having like the, the big, big uh, push for Linux gaming, like the Steam machines. And the Steam machines at first, they were also going for native Linux gaming. Like the like wine wasn't an option yet. Uh, there were some, some big publishers that got into uh, making native games. Um, like Warner Bros, like Warner Games, uh, Square as, as well. Um, but yeah, the problem is that it's hit or miss because like there's not a lot of Linux game developers. You have to maintain those uh, those builds. Uh, you have to make sure they run on every distro. So this proved to be a bit challenging. Like the Steam machines didn't work out. Um, and. Uh, on the same side, we have like a, like um, wine making a lot of progress. Um, but yeah, uh, back like uh, when I'm thinking like ten years ago, there was still I mean, wine was very good for running some games, mm -hmm. uh, but still there was still a lot of issues that that would appear. So uh, I can think of like uh, one of the biggest issue we we had with gaming was with controller support. So I don't know if some of you remember, but uh, in order to have like modern games uh, be compatible with uh, Xbox controller, you had to use uh, stuff like Xbox GRV uh, or uh, what's it, done ex dun execute emu, or like uh, even like the um, like yeah, if you didn't have that, you would like the the way uh, Linux joysticks and Windows joysticks work, they're not really doing the same thing. So like the, the triggers on the back, 
on Windows, they have like two half axes, and on, on Linux, you have each of one is one full axis. So you end up having your games where your character, like the camera is spinning around the character, and then you cannot do anything unless you press the trigger like midway, exactly midway, and then the camera stops spinning. I mean, then we had to, we needed to have these compatibility layers with uh, uh, Xbox DRV and all that, all that stuff. That, that, now that's all resolved. Um, window handling also was quite painful. Like you would have games that would uh, crash when alt tabbing. You would have games that, I mean, some games still do that, but that's, we now have the tools to, uh, to work around this. Um, or run the game in a virtual desktop. I mean, that would handle like most of the windowing. That's not really a, um, a wine issue. That can be like a mature issue, a K-Win issue. Uh, back then it would be like compass, uh, even. Um, there was a, a lot of, I mean, there's like so many windowing systems on Linux and wine has to support like all of them and they're all doing like their own weird things. So, back then like the solution was to use the virtual desktop uh now we have stuff like game scope which makes the situation a, a lot better um back also back then we didn't have any support for dx11 uh dx12 didn't even exist back then but yeah for the longest time uh we had like those dx11 games that we couldn't play at all on linux um and at some points we had, before we had proper DX11 support on Linux, we would have native, well, sort of native ports that would use DX11 on Linux. I don't know if you remember like the Bioshock Infinite ports. That was sort of a translation layer, uh, kind of like Wine. It was like virtual programming, uh, even like virtual programming. Um, and and that that was before like DXVK before like uh, before any kind of support for DX11 and now we thanks to Vulkan that has that has changed like totally. Um, one like uh, one issue that we run a lot uh, we were running a lot and it was uh, Wine Menu Builder, which in Lutris is not something we really want. I mean we don't want to associate any file association with uh, anything, and we don't even want to have the desktop shortcuts, because those will point to like some build of wine somewhere on the system, but Lutris uses like uh, other stuff, like the Lutris runtime, which load libraries on uh, like to, uh, to, use, to use wine. So those desktop uh, shortcuts wouldn't, wouldn't make sense in that uh, case. Now we have Wine Menu Builder like disabled entirely from our builds. Um, Async was an issue for for some time, like getting uh, users to to know how to increase their file descriptors because like all the Linux distros they they, they shipped with like a ridiculously slow. Uh, low number of file descriptors that you could use, and there was like pointing everyone to uh, to modify their like, uh, like their limits dot com for like that was quite uh, quite challenging. And now I mean I think pretty much every Linux distro chips with a reasonable amount of file descriptors, so that's also resolved. Um, DRM used to be a much bigger issue as well. Uh, Denuvo was a big issue for some time. Now I haven't heard of any issue about Denuvo like in a really long time. Anti-cheats, the ones that are not kernel based, uh, they're mostly okay. The only issue now is with the, the kernel anti-cheats, we, which we can't really, I mean, yeah, when we, there are some things that can be done, but most, most likely the, the best solution is to get the publisher on board and say, okay, you just ship the native version of the anti-cheat and you're, you're good to go. Um, one of the difficulties like with full Lutris is, was to, to ship a wine build that would work everywhere because we didn't want to depend on like the distribution to, uh, to ship like the, we want, we wanted to have like, at first we wanted to have the really latest version of wine, but then we wanted 
the latest version of Wine, but with a bunch of patches added to it. So at first we were using like the system Wine, and then we started using Wine staging, and that's that wasn't good enough uh, for some stuff. We started integrating uh, some patches that were very game specific, a lot of hacks for a lot of stuff that were wasn't ready for inclusion in upstream, but um, it was like uh, those patches were uh, good enough for like, uh, I mean, they were proved to work. So we pushed them to the public and if, any, if anything went wrong, I mean, we would get user feedback. So there were like no, I mean, still do, to this day, we don't really do automated testing, but I mean, there's like so many uh, Lutris users that if there's an issue with a, a build, we'll be notice, uh, notified like pretty quick and we'll like uh, make a patch release to, to fix this issue. So that's why we have like a bunch of uh, uh, smaller patch, uh, patch release for like Wine 7.2, for example, we have like a bunch of them. <clears throat> like the, the really big changer that has changed the, the whole game was the arrival of, of Proton. At first, I was really skeptical about the existence of Proton. When I heard, first heard Valve is making a compatibility, compatibility layer based on Wine to run Windows games on Linux, I couldn't believe it because even even though I was doing pretty much the same thing on uh, with Lutris, I still in my mind it was still too hackish to uh, to to push to the general public. Uh, but yeah, I wasn't expecting Valve to to put so much resources into Wine and not only Wine because they they fix Wine, but also they they uh, made some improvements to Mesa to. Uh, uh, a lot of other projects that are not wine related, but that's benefited the whole gaming ecosystem for, for everyone. So at first people were saying, oh, um, Proton is, is a thing. So is that going to kill Lutris? Is not now Lutris not no longer a thing? Uh, no, it was never like a competitor because Lutris was not only for Steam, but also like everything else steam is not the only game platform is even if it's like the biggest game platform there's a lot of ga other games there there's also games that are not on a game platform there's like abandonware there's like uh uh yeah there's a whole, a whole variety of uh, games that you could want to to run that are not on steam so it was not really a competition it was mostly a lot of a lot of help because it's improved the quality of wine and everything else, like really greatly. Um, yeah, and this also en enabled us to get rid of our Steam integration. We didn't have to worry about this. Uh, I don't know if you've tried to run the, the Steam client on Wine, but it's pretty horrible. It's very glitchy. It's your have your the, the, the Steam plan flashing and everything. Not a good experience. Um, it hasn't been always like this, but as soon as we could like drop Wine Steam, uh, that was like a really good. And now now if there are like maybe like two or three games that still need the, the Windows version of Steam, I think like maybe like mothers they can't always do, uh, you can always uh, load mods on uh, on Proton. So some people still use the the Windows Steam plan, but we just redirect them to the to the Steam page on Lutris, and there's an answer to install the Windows version of Steam. But not having to deal with Steam was, uh, like, we moved a lot of work uh, from our parts, and that was like, um, instead of, being competition, it was like really, even if we didn't interact like between the, the, the both teams, um, yeah, there, there was, it was a lot of help. And uh, I think that Proton help ma make Lutris what it is today. So yeah, now, now we, we have this, this world where most of what we have today on Linux is wine based so there's been a decrease in native ports uh you 
sometimes have uh, native games, mostly from indie developers, uh, developers that will use an engine like Unity. Unity is pretty easy to, to uh, ship like multi-platform, so you'll have um, people build like uh, Linux build for, for those, but like, you don't really see like AAA games released natively. I don't know what's the, the actual situation on Google Stadia. What's, I don't think they were making actual native games. I think they were they had like some kind of translation layer that was specifically to run on Stadia servers. So that's why we, I never expected to see any benefit from Stadia. But now that Stadia has ended, like it kind of has proven um, that we didn't see any game that was released on Stadia that got a native, re uh, a native release on the desktop as well. So that wasn't that wasn't really a full. Um, but yeah, what what wine um, lets us do? It's let us focus on game preservation, which is, which is like now that we have really good compatibility with pretty much like every game. Like this, like now the norm is like you take the default wine build that we have, you throw any game at it, and there's like a 95% that the game will work. Whereas like 10 years ago, that wasn't really the case at all. You, like the, the, the amount of tweaks and tinkering that you need to get something running has really lowered uh, a lot, which has enabled us to, um, to auto-generate like, game installers from the Lutris client itself. So, for example, if you connect your GOG account and you install GOG games, you don't need to have like a Lutris installer on the website to get those. Lutris will just figure out an installer that will just install the game with the defaults and get it like uh, get it installed in Lutris. And you just most of the time this will work without uh, any tinkering. Um, so yeah, the the focus on preservation. I mean, it's not like historic preservation like you would see in like in, in a museum it's more about making games available for everyone so it's more about playability than actually like uh like preserving like the uh the objects like old computers and stuff like this because a lot of the game preservation or software preservation or like hardware preservation is really trying to stick as close to the original as possible uh, Lutris is not about that, it's having the best experience possible on a modern system for games that are either old or new. So it's not, not it's like preservation, but it's more about keeping games alive rather than, than um, having them as an artifact of the past, you know. Uh, yeah, and I was saying like, native games uh, as sad as this makes me, uh, I don't believe it's the solution anymore. So I was saying, when I started Lutris, it was native first, and uh, we tried to push native as much as we could. And we quickly realized that uh, over time, stuff would break. So if you install like your old games from Humble Bundle, you'll realize that a bunch of them are broken, and you cannot play them. So the solution and most of the time is just to install the windows version and then you'll have no problem um, the thing with wine it supports uh, w windows 95 to windows 11. like you can it's not really running like windows 95 but it emulates like the apis of windows 95. Uh, there's no such thing in in linux if we had something like that if we had something like say uh, okay run this executable in this uh, Debian 4 environment with like GTK 1 and stuff like this, then it would be easier to get like all Loki games running. But that's sadly not the case. So, and also uh, those native Linux ports get very little maintenance after they get ported. So usually the port is like a contract job by uh, like, for example, uh, Flibility GBIBO or Eculus, like for the, uh, most well-known uh, porters uh, but even those ports which are often really good on release they tend to age very poorly 
Um, and we've seen that with like Proton, where uh, Valve would certify games that had um, a native release. They would say, oh, just play the, the Proton version because that will run without, with much less issues than the, the Linux version. Um, so yeah, now now that we have, like Lucas has st started like in 2009, it's been a while, and now we feel, really feel that we've made a, a huge amount of progress. Uh, I have, I'm overwhelmed by the number of games that are now playable. I mean, I, I, during the process, I was b buying a lot of games so I could test them. Now I'm left with too many games to play. I cannot get like to everything, but um, and that's that's a good thing. Um, but still, there's probably some something we can improve in uh, in Lutris. Uh, for example, I would like to have some kind of rating system that's closer to um, uh, what Team Deck Verified does, as opposed to uh, what Wine HQ does, which had the metal uh, rating. Um, so I want to, to have some, a system that says, does it work? Uh, does a game work? Yes or no? And that's like that's the the truth that the the, the, the game has been verified to work on some, on some test systems, and we can assure that a game works. If for some reason a user has this game and it doesn't work, then we can investigate what's the reason for this not working. It's also a way because sometimes a game will work, but there will be some uh, some quirks with a game. I want also to to list those. So if you look at the the Steam verified ratings. You see, sometimes a game is playable, but it has a bunch of issues that are related to, to the game. Uh, most of these are specific to the Steam Deck, but I'd like to have something that's uh, more broad and applicable to, to desktop gaming. Um, also, I'd like to have, so I was talking about the automatic installers in Lutris. There's a way to leverage those those ratings, those this this metadata that we that we would attach to ratings, to to make the installer do the correct thing by default without having uh, people man maintain uh, a script. So it's basically uh, Lutris building the script itself uh, from metadata. That it has. Of course, this won't solve all edge cases. So that's why the, the scripting system will still be around, but that's really to uh, when you have like more complex scenarios where you have to download a bunch of files when you have to apply patches and stuff like this. This will still be uh, possible, but for the most part, like all games that don't need like any tinkering, but still need some components. Like for example, you might have a game that requires .NET. Then we we just need to say. This game works, but it uses .NET, and or this game works, but it doesn't work with eSync, so eSync has to be disabled. And from there, you don't have to maintain the scripts. Lutus will get this information and and uh, do the correct thing. I think it might be really nice to have some good amount of time for questions and answers. Mm -hmm. I'm almost done, so yeah. Okay, so yeah, I would like to we'll type. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also that would be a good way to uh, track regressions. And if I can also add uh, to those quirks, like uh, links to uh, bugs in one issue, that would be really nice as well. So we can all, like auto close them, like when or get rid of the the, the quirk when the, the the wine bug is closed. Um, also, yeah, I mean, I, I would like a way to have some kind of Steam input-like uh, configuration, um, cloud saves, um, and also have like bring back support for uh, tinkering with Steam games because we kind of dropped that with uh, like uh, when we stopped doing Wine Steam, but now I would maybe have some kind of I would like to have some kind of Proton Tricks integration or something like this. Um, GitLab CI. I mean, I've heard like uh, that's now we won't need to use. I mean, the, the current build system is kind of cumbersome, but with uh, like this, the the 
Windows on Win64, that's going to simplify a lot of things. So we're probably going to be able to ship a lot of uh, build a lot faster. And yeah, once that's done, I mean, we'll be ready to ship 1.0. So yeah, now if you have uh, any any questions, yeah, take them. I mean, it's a Linux exclusive, so yeah, it's a lot of a lot of uh, users are new Linux users. Yes, uh, a lot of people have told me that uh, it's been really useful for them when they started their Linux journey um, because uh, it helped them simplify the, the installation of games. Um, that was the goal from the start. I mean, I've never targeted uh, power users. Uh, because I knew, I mean, this Lutris has never been really popular with power users because they like to tinker, they like to do everything themselves. So I wanted to have something for people who are not power users or are, who don't have the technical knowledge to, to make games work and to, who don't want to go through those tinkering steps. Yeah, and also, yeah, we we uh, we still recommend to this day to uh, like ship uh, to install like, the the system wine because we need those dependencies. We have the Lutris runtime, which is a set of libraries like the Steam runtime has. Um, but that's we don't ship everything because if we ship like uh, every library that we can think of, then this like things will break on some distros most likely arch but yeah it can be another distro yeah so uh, thank you